before I begin, the we, the Greater Shepparton City Council, begin today's meeting by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, which now comprises Greater Shepparton. We pay respect to their tribal elders. We celebrate their continuing culture and we acknowledge the memory of their ancestors. Please note that this council meeting is being streamed live and recorded in accordance with the council's live streaming and recording of council meetings policy. All care is taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the public gallery, it is assumed your consent is given in the event that your image is broadcast. For more information, the policy is available on the Greater Shepparton City Council's website. Do we have any apologies, councillors? Mr Mayor, I'll um, move that the apologies <coughs> from Councillor Orozvari and Councillor Summer be noted and a leave of absence be granted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Dennis Patterson. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. You don't need to speak to it. Councillor Patterson, all in favour? Carried. Do we have any declarations of conflicts of interest, councillors? None. Thank you. Confirm the minutes of the previous meeting. There's a recommendation there on page one. Do I have a councillor wishing to move that recommendation as the motion? I move, Mr Mayor. Councillor Giovanetti, a seconder, please. Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Giovanetti, you wish to speak to that? No. Councillor O'Keefe, no councillor wishing to speak to or for that? No. All in favour of the motion? Carried. Item 6.1 is the Sir Murray Boucher Memorial proposed site location. Do I have a councillor wishing to move any motions relevant to that? Councillor Sutton. I'll move that motion. As printed on page two. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Sutton, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, I'd like to speak to this motion. The committee has looked at various locations around Shepparton and they've decided they would like to ha rescind this previous motion because they believe there's a better place to put it and accept the proposed location of Monash, Monash Park because... It's closer to the War Memorial and it's in keeping with this area. So that's what I'd like to do. Good, thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to add any comments? Um, basically what uh, Councillor Sutton has already mentioned, but also that the family of uh, St Murray Boucher also agree with the uh, change in the location. So I think that's an important factor as well. Okay, could any other councillors wishing to speak against this motion? Any councillors wishing to speak for the motion? I'd like to quickly speak. Thank you. Um, I think it's quite amazing the, um, the history of this. You know, Sir Murray Boucher, he was uh, dedicated like dedicated like horseman in the First World War, of course. Um, he was Deputy Premier of Victoria from 1920 to 1930. Um, he's a Victoria Agent General in London in 1936. He had a very distinguished the, um, career and held lots and lots of positions in government authorities after the war. So. Uh, he was knighted in 1938, so it is very important that we recognise people that have had a big input in our history, and this is certainly one, and it'll be great to see the statue up. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Any other councillor wishing to speak for or against this motion? Yes, Mr Mayor. The, um, the original decision from the committee proposing this memorial uh, indicated the preferred site was going to be in the Queen's Gardens, but um, when it got to the point of looking at the the scale, you know, the size of the statues, it, it certainly wasn't going to be appropriate in the Queen's Garden. So they've uh, re-looked at that proposal and come up with, uh, with Monash Park. And of course, in the process, um, updating of the Monash Park Master Plan um, will need to be undertaken to incorporate the location of this statue. That will, of course, then provide an opportunity for public comment in respect to that, uh, that new master plan. And any member of the public who is uh, particularly keen to see what the statue is going to look like, they're on display in our foyer area and have been for some time. Good. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Councillor Sutton, any other Councillor Sutton wishing to speak for or against? No. Councillor Sutton, any closing comments? All in favour? Against? Motion carried. Councillors, we have a recommendation on page nine. 
in respect to the contract six, uh, 1693, Fraser. No, I've page gone past. Page six. Page six. This fluix is really. Sorry, page six, councillors. The proposed closure of part <coughs> of Court Bowl abutting lot 30, Mile Road Drive in Kyala. Do I have a councillor wishing to move the recommendation as a motion? I'll move it, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Patterson. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Hazelman, Councillor Patterson. Uh, yeah, this is a, um, a, a change of plan from um, Melbourne Drive. Basically, at the end of Melbourne Drive, there's a very big balloon at the end of it as a roundabout, and um, the new development that's going out there, it needs to have a few slight adjustments to it, and this will allow the new estate to continue on and, and build through there. So it's only very minor, and all the locals are more than happy with it. Good. Councillor Hazelman. Entry the administrative procedure, Mr Mayor, and um, uh, submissions are being sought. Uh, the point of debate about the pros and cons will you know, come to the fore when any of those submissions come back and be considered by Council. So um, you know, let it go out, let the community have their comments on it. And I think I agree with Councillor Patterson, it'll be a fairly straightforward process. Good. Any Councillor wishing to speak against this motion? Any Councillor wishing to speak for the motion? Councillor Patterson, any closing comments? All in favour? Against? Motion carried. Now, item 6.3. The uh, contract 1693, Fraser Street Toilets Redevelopment, the awarding of the contract. Councillors, there's a recommendation on page 9. Do I have any councillor wishing to move this recommendation as the motion? Oh, Councillor Giovannetti, do I have a seconder? I'll second it, Mr Mayor. Councillor Patterson. Councillor Giovannetti. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. There's been quite a bit of conjecture about the cost of this particular project, uh, both in the press and uh, around the streets of Shepparton. Um, I recall several years ago I was involved with a, uh, a group of uh, people with a significant disability who wrote to Council urging them to ensure that there were adequate uh, toilet facilities available within the city of Greater Shepherd and CBD. Um, and this is the, uh, the outcome from that, particular, from that particular discussion, as well as the CBD redevelopment plan. The cost is high, but because of the specialised nature of some of the facilities that are going in there, um, that's the reason behind the uh, higher than normal price. Uh, when I say higher than normal, it does compare favourably with the uh, cost per square metre of uh, other toilet facilities that have been constructed in uh, recent times within the City of Greater Shepparton, and I think it will be a significant benefit to the uh, population of uh, the City uh, when they utilise the uh, Maud Street and CBD areas. Good, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Patterson. Yes, thank, thank you. you. I'd just like to add... Councillor Genovetti. 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 I often get that. Yeah, right, that no. Gio Giovanetti. <laughs> Only said the million Giovanetti. times. Um, I, I know. I know some of the comments in the um, in the media about you know, spending that much money, and um, you know, we're not having got our priorities right for Mel. Well, to me, the first thing the Mel needs is a decent set of toilets. These aren't just toilets. They're the bees knees toilets. There's. $110,000 provided by the state government for the disability side of things. Um, so they are really our, if you could say it, they are our leading set of toilets in, in Shepparton. They have to be good. And I think these people are criticised, would be criticising us again if we did a cheap job. They'd be still on us. So I think we're doing the right thing. Um, it is a lot of money, for sure, but there is a lot of earthworks underneath and pipe work has to be changed. So there's rationale behind that. Um, we weren't completely convinced at last meeting. That's why I was left at the table. And as councillors, I believe, we've done due diligence on that and looked at all those figures. And uh, I'm now happy to, to second this. Um, I think, as I said, you, know, you, you probably won't attract a lot of people to the mall with a good set of toilets, but you'll send a lot of people away with a bad set. So I think it's important we do this right when we do it. So there's no use sinking down the track five years. We should have done it properly and done a good set when we're doing it. So I believe we're doing the right thing. Okay, thank you, Councillor Patterson. Any councillor wishing to speak against the motion? I speak in favour of the motion. In, in a moment, you will. Yeah, okay. 
as they keep. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Look, I do absolutely agree that the Fraser Street toilets are in desperate need of work. There is no doubt about that. Um, and the public do deserve to have, you know, a much better facility. However, my objection is going over the budget in such a huge way, being at least 151000 above the estimate. Um, I just find that, you know, really hard to understand how we could get that figure way above our estimate. So, um, look, I feel we need to um, absolutely do something. Do we go, go to this level of cost? I'm still trying to justify that. Um, I just simply feel that perhaps we need to revisit this um, and see what our options could be. I just find it really hard to perhaps accept that this we could go that far over our estimate. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Any other councillor wishing to speak for the motion? Councillor Abdullah. Thank you. Uh, just a few comments. Uh, one of the common complaints from, sh from shoppers and visitors in Shepparton CBD has been the lack of decent public toilet facility, the one that caters to the needs of people with all abilities and their caregivers. There has been a strong demand for an improved public toilet in the CBD, and the current toilet facility in Fraser Street offers limited features. As I understand, it was refurbished five years ago and is now at a stage where the existing building cannot uh, support the additional infrastructure required. Hence, the plan is to demolish the current toilet building and construct a brand new uh, toilet building in Fraser Street. Fraser Street redevelopment, uh, toilet redevelopment is consistent with the overall CBD redevelopment strategy that aims to revive economic activity and bring more shoppers and visitors in the CBD. Having a high-quality, attractive, and all-inclusive public toilet building in a high-profile CBD location will only complement the redevelopment of CBD in, and rejuvenation of uh, Mott Street Mall. Um, on surface, yes, it looks expensive. Um, uh, it's an expensive project on surface. However, there are certain aspects of the project that must be taken into account uh, when comparing its cost with uh, that of any other toilet or public toilet for that matter. Some of those uh, aspects include, uh, number one, building a toilet for private or residential use is different from building a public toilet that has to adhere to a range of public safety regulations and quality standards. Also, uh, when we think about the dollar amount required in building toilets for private use, certain costs like uh, personal supervision cost or project management cost, they are not taken into account. Whereas the public toilet construction cost, such as this one, um, does include these cost items. So obviously any cost comparison between a private and public toilet construction uh, could be misleading and is not comparable, uh, I understand. Um, Number two, the proposed Fraser Street public toilet uh, is not just a standard accessible toilet, as noticed by uh, my fellow councillors. Um, it's a rather high-end toilet facility that includes, includes features such as changing places, toilet and parents' room, including feeding room, a toilet and baby change facilities. Standard accessible toilets do not meet the needs of all. And, um, you know, changing places toilets are different to standard accessible toilets in that they have extra features and hence extra costs. Um, I also understand that the scope includes uh, demolition of uh, current to toilet building, hence an additional cost element is there. And a rather restricted site access for demolition and construction is another unique feature of this toilet project, um, hence another um, evidence of the uh, overall cost going up. Um, I think the Fraser Street Toilet Facility in CBT will Councilor cater to Abdullah, the people. Councillor would you like an extension of time? Uh, two minutes will be good, thank you. Give us extension, <laughs> we're all in favour of that. Continue. <laughs> uh, see, the only thing is that um, the Fraser Street Toilet Facility in CBT will cater to people with all abilities, which is so important. And uh, it is, um, uh, you know, the 110 um, uh, 10K changing places fund has to be used within this current financial year, as I understand. So if it's not built, uh, we'll perhaps lose that as well. And, um, you know, that's, that's, I think that's the main thing, that uh, I'm in favour of that because of all these reasons. No, thank you. Thank you. Any other councillor wishing to speak for the motion? Councillor Sutton, sorry, Councillor Hazen, you're beaten to the... Um, I just agree with you, Seema and Dennis and Bruce. I realise it's a very costly project, but I think this type of facility is required for many, and if we don't build it now, we're going to lose that money, so I'm in agreement with the recommendation. Thank you. Any other councillor wishing to speak against the motion? 
for the motion. Councillor Hazelman. Um, at the previous council meeting, I actually moved that um, we defer consideration of this item until this meeting because I had a number of questions I wanted to answer for myself. One of them obviously being around the price, where we're getting value for money, cost benefit, all that, and the actual need. And um, I think by getting some of those questions answered, that it's the pricing per metre is commensurate with, uh, with other constructions that have been undertaken to produce uh, public toilets. Is there a need? I consistently hear people um, around Shepparton over the last number of years bemoaning the lack of quality toilets in our, um, in our central business district and on occasion being very critical of some of the toilets that are in operation, many of which are private and not council, but that gets lost in the, in the story. Um, are we getting benefit? Um, yes, I believe we are. I think we are getting actual quality product. And I'm also very mindful that the, the grant that we received uh, that's been renegotiated a couple of times around this project um, has the potential to be lost if we want to move in a different direction. Uh, look, and no doubt the, the council will get criticised on the expenditure, but then the council gets criticised on every level of expenditure, so this won't be any different. But I think what we are going to see is that uh, in, our, in our CVD, as the community and patrons in the CVD have been asking for for a long time, we are going to produce a very good quality public facility for the, the usage. Good, thank you, Councillor Hazelman. There's no one left to speak anyway. Now we've all gone through. Uh, Councillor Giovanetti, would you like any closing comments? Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I don't really need to make any too many closing comments because I think it's been very well summed up by all the other councillors who have spoken. I do uh, take on board Councillor O'Keefe's um, concern relating to the uh, cost blowout from the estimate to the uh, final price. And I think that that is something that Council needs to be cognisant of and also to ensure that in the future, the estimates that are provided to councillors are as accurate as what they can possibly be. Indeed. That being said, all in favour of the motion? Against? So please call a division, Mr Mayor. Indeed. Be clear, the motion carried first. And then uh, all in favour again, please? Councillor Sutton, Councillor Giovanetti, Councillor Hazelin, Councillor Adams, Councillor Abdullah, Councillor Patterson. Against, Councillor O'Keefe. Next item is 6.0. Not 6. Point at all. 0.4, sorry. We've got the A. Contract 1752 Old Dukey Road upgrade between Drummond Road and Doyles Road in Shepparton. Do I have a council wishing to move the recommendation on page page 14? Please. Mr Mayor, I'll move the recommendation printed on page 14 of the agenda. Do I have a seconder, please? I'll Councillor Patterson. Yeah. Councillor Hazelman. Yeah, I think this is a, um, a fantastic project because for one of our major east-west uh, arterials, this has been a, uh, a major blight for, for a number of years. That section of road, um, for a lot of people, the, the volumes of traffic that it carries on a daily basis, it uh, is not up to the standard you would anticipate in a, in a major provincial city. But, uh, this work uh, has been long overdue um, and it's very pleasing to see that it's uh, you know, got to this stage now and, and will be constructed at the standard that that road actually deserves. And without wanting to go over um, old sores and raise old issues, no doubt this major upgrade of that road is going to increase the volumes of traffic on that road and by extension will significantly increase the volumes of traffic that will use Andrew Kelly Avenue. Well provide um, the, the final nail in the coffin for those who aspire to have the road closed. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Councillor Patterson? Uh, yes, I, I totally support Councillor Hazelman's um, comments. I think there's 8,000 vehicles use that road every day and 11% of them are heavy vehicles. And that will only increase um, with Pacman expanding their output. Um, his comments regarding Sir Andrew Fairley Avenue, I, I think are very pertinent. That's going to become very important and it's still open. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it, uh, having that whole road done. 
It, it, um, it has really crept up over the years to become a very, very busy thoroughfare and it needs doing urgently and it gives us um, great access to all of the factories down there, great access to the bypass. Good, thank you. Any councillor wishing to speak against this motion? Any other councillor wishing to add further comment speaking for the motion? None? Okay, Councillor Hazelman, any closing comments? Um, yeah, Mr Mayor, uh, myself and at least one other person in this room regularly uses that road on two wheels and I think, <laughs> I think our respective backsides will be much appreciative of this work <laughs> being done. Oh, duly noted, Councillor Hazelman. Well, he's reintroducing something fresh to the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something that I'd picture as being fresh. But anyway, all in favour of the motion? Against? Motion carried. Now, item 7.1 on page 18, councillors, in regard to the section 86 committees of management, membership appointments. Do I have a councillor wishing to move? motion in relation to the recommendation. Councillor O'Keefe. Do we have a seconder? Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Patterson. <laughs> Councillor O'Keefe. Yeah, look, I just think it's really important that we have um, the right committees on board, committee of management, um, and supporting this motion, obviously, to make sure they do get the support they do need. Um, yeah, that's probably all I need to say on that one. Very good. Councillor Patterson. Uh, yeah, look, we speak long and hard about our volunteers. We all know we'd be down the gurgler without them. So we've got to appreciate the ones we've got and welcome the ones that are coming along to help. And thank the ones that have provided years of service as well. Any other councillor wishing to speak against this motion? For the motion, Councillor Giovanetti. Look, I can only reiterate what the other two uh, councillors have, uh, have mentioned. I think it's... Uh, fantastic that people are prepared to put up their hand in a voluntary capacity to work on these um, community committees and I think that uh, as Councillor O'Keefe indicated before uh, it's beholden on us as a council to support these uh, groups as much as we possibly can. Good thank you. Any other councillor wishing to speak <coughs> against the motion? No for the motion? None? Good. Councillor Okay, would you like any closing comments? Just on closing, I have been to a number of events where I have been involved with the volunteers and I think the council do an amazing job of lifting their spirits and supporting them and also acknowledging um, the contribution. So in closing, I think that's really, really important. Good, thank you. All in favour of the motion? Against? The motion carried. Item 7.2. We have a recommendation on page 21 in regard to the review of Community Safety Strategy Year 2 Action Plan, December 2015 to December 2016. Any council wishing to move a motion in relation to the recommendation? I'll move it, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Patterson. Uh, yes, this plan was first um, accepted in December 2014, it's a two-year review. Uh, it's been very successful, um, it's all very self-explanatory and um, it's, it's been great. Good, Councillor O'Keefe. Any other councillor wishing to speak against the motion? For the motion? Good, Councillor Patterson. No, thank you. No, thank you. All in favour? Against, motion carried. Item 7.8.1. Deeds is on page 25. Mayor and councillor allowances. Do I have any councillor wishing to move any items in, in relation to this? Sorry, just for the information, yes. In the background on page 26, councillors, uh, third paragraph down, it begins with the word previously, allowances for category two councils. The word previously should be omitted and the word currently should be inserted. So it's currently allowances for category two councils. 
proceeds. So, do I have a council wishing to move a motion? Oh, just looking in or any direction, Councillor Hazelin. Move the motion printed on page 25, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Hazelin. Mr. the uh, Minister for Local Government um, uh, back in December authorised a 2.5 per cent increase in the allowances, which, uh, my, from my recollection and understanding, the Council did adopt at its December council meeting. He did. There is a provision though that the um, sections, relevant sections of the Local Government Act is that public notice of that decision needs to be made um, to bring this into effect and the public invited to comment on the, on the council decision. So this in effect is a fairly administrative sort of process that's uh, giving effect to that public consultation component and um, Advertisement will be in the Shepparton News outlining the, the intention and inviting public comment, which um, if received, the Council will hold a special Council meeting to hear and consider those submissions. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Giovanetti. I think Councillor Hazelman has covered it all very well. Any Councillor wishing to speak against this motion? I find that hard to believe, but if that were the case. Any council wishing to speak for the motion? Councillor Patterson. Uh, yes, this is one of the sad times really as a councillor that the audience didn't get an opportunity to be in the councillor suite to see us before the meeting. The sheer joy in the room with our pay rise was just immense. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. Um, one of the councils was kind enough to go down to Travel World and got some travel brochures and we're all <laughs> looking at them and, and it's terrific. You know, and it, for once it really stood out you know, between the mayor and the councillors. The councillors are, you know, looking at the mayor and he's got his triple brochures of Hawaii and <laughs> Paris and, and we're handing around brochures between Yamurka and Benalla. <laughs> Anyhow, any, any, any little help helps. So we did appreciate it. Thanks, God, if we do get it by the good of grace yeah. of the, the people do decide to give us our 2.5% and will be well and truly utilised very well in Yamurka or Benalla. <laughs> Thank you for your input, Councillor Patterson. Any other council wishing to speak for or against? I make the comment that I think we should spend the increase within the municipality. Yes, uh, not Benalla. Right. It will be a tally group on the way through. <laughs> <laughs> it burnt down. <laughs> Thank you, councillors. Uh, Councillor Hazelman, any closing comments? No, good. All in favour? <clears throat> against? Motion carried. Item 8.2, I think it is now, page 28, the January 2017 monthly financial report. Do I have a councillor wishing to move the motion, a motion? Yes, Councillor Gibanetti. Have a seconder, please. Councillor Sutton. <laughs> Just to be clear, the motion is that the council receive and note the January 2017 monthly financial report. Councillor Gibanetti. Well, I think I'll take over from Councillor Osvari as to uh, um, his normal stance with this particular recommendation. Mr Handball, yes. And that I'll ask Mr Titzel to perhaps give us an overview of the financial report uh, for, the, for the period up to and including the end of January. Mr Titzel, if you will. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and through you to the councillors. Uh, if I can refer to the attachments which start, I think, on page 111 of the agenda. Um, operating performance, as reported in previous reports, our rates and charges are uh, recognised in total in advance and hence the year-to-date actual is on operating performance, adjusted underlying surplus as a percentage of underlying revenue is um, quite high. That is, um, will come down to roughly in line with the adopted forecast um, as depicted in that report. Uh, the financial health, again because of rates and charges received in advance and our cash uh, balance being reasonably high at this time of year, is um, running at 312.2 per cent. That again will come back down closer to the, the normal operating range of somewhere around 150 um, per cent or slightly more by the end of the financial year. Financial obligations is showing what our current loan borrowings 
as a percentage of rates is. Um, year to date actually somewhat lower than the adopted forecast and the adopted budget at this stage and that's because we took the opportunity to pay down a, um, a loan that had come out of a fixed interest period into a variable interest period and we will eventually refinance that into a cheaper interest rate at some point in the future. The following page shows um, a traffic light report um, and as discussed in previous council meetings, user charges has continued to be unfavourable against budget and that's largely due to the, um, the amount of use charges we've received through the Cosgrove landfill site. At a report item later in this agenda today, you'll, um, we're recommending that we lower the gate fees to uh, more accurately reflect current market conditions on that pricing. Um, Offsetting some of that reduction in income is a favourable materials and consumables not, um, result and that's uh, due to the lower volumes going into the landfill. We're paying less in EPA levies and some other costs. So it's the largely the variances. The capital expenditure at this point in time is tracking um, pretty similar to next year and we're confident that we'll get the majority of the capital program completed by year end. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Title. Councillor Sutton, do you wish to add anything further? Thanks, Chris. I did good. <laughs> Any other councillor wishing to speak against this motion? For the motion? I'd just like to make a comment. Always love when we pay off a loan early. Apart from the fact we're saving on interest, that clearly shows that council isn't under any financial stress. Um, it is a really good sign. So, yeah, we do approve of that. That's a very good point. Councillor Giovannetti. Oh, I think uh, Mr Tysel has uh, covered things adequately, thank you. Good. All in favour of the, of the motion? <coughs> Against? Motion carried. Now item 8.3 on page 30, councillors. Our financial hardship policy. There's a recommendation at the bottom of page 30. Any councillor wishing to move that as a motion? Councillor Patterson, you just opened your hand. Right, well, yeah, well. I thought it was, yeah. Seconder, please. Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Patterson. Uh, yes, this is our, naturally our um, financial hardship policy. Unfortunately, we don't have to use it very often. Um, it's important that it's there so people understand there is somewhere to go if there is issues. There was some talk about um, reviewing it more regularly, but basically it's the same policy we've had for a while. Um, if we ever decide, due to unseen circumstances, we need to review it, we can review it straight away. So I'm more than happy with the four years. Uh, we're only you know, creating work for someone unnecessarily by doing it every year or two. Um, so totally support it. It's a good policy. It does allow for people getting into hardship, which is what it's all about. Um, you never know who's going to be there, including yourself. So it is important that we look after people that are stressing in this world, and this policy does cover that. Good, thank you. Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Patterson's covered that well, thank you. Any councillor wishing <laughs> to speak <laughs> against this motion? No, anyone else speaking for? No, that being the case, Councillor Patterson, any closing comments? No, thank you. All in favour? Against? Motion carried. 8.4 councillors on page 34. Our council, a council plan progress report. There's a recommendation there. Does uh, any councillor wishing just to uh, move that? And I'll just read it out because I think it's important. The recommendation is that the Council note the Council Plan Progress Report, December 2016, which provides details in relation to achieving the two uh, bullet points there. One is the key strategic objectives identified in the Council Plan between 2013 and 2017 and key strategic activities contained within the 2016-2017 budget, which will become Council's performance statement. That is the recommendation. Councillor Abdullah, you wish to move that recommendation as the motion? Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Giovannetti. Councillor Abdullah, if you wish to speak to it, please. Yep. So I would like to move the recommendation on page number 34. This is about the council plan. Uh, the four-year council plan contains key strategic objectives and strategies to achieve those objectives. So like any other plan, it is important to regularly measure and track the performance of council plan. 
Council Plan 2013-2017 is comprehensive and based around five strategic pillars, um, namely active and engaged community, enhancing the environment, economic prosperity, quality infrastructure, and high-performing organization. So the plan identifies uh, 16 key objectives um, that are spread over these five pillars. And for every pillar, there are objectives, and objectives have got strategies, and strategies have got key strategic activities um, to, um, to implement those strategies. Uh, one of the, for instance, I will just uh, want to quote one of the uh, pillars um, um, regarding active and engaged community, where there was an objective to continue to enhance community capacity building. And uh, in regards to this objective, the strategy was to develop and implement neighboring planning within Shepparton. And the key strategic activity for this strategy was to develop one plan and one locality plan endorsed. Now, how to measure this activity? Um, the measurement of the result was, the measurement was uh, that uh, they were, um, there was St. George's Road plan and Shep East plan that were um, endorsed. So uh, just to give you an example that how this plan works and how a community can progress and track this uh, plan. So those interested community members who want to understand the depth and breadth of council activities, and they also want to track progress of uh, these activities, this progress report is a very good starting point. And uh, hopefully uh, they will be able to find some reasons to appreciate the hard work uh, put together by council in making uh, Greater Shepparton great. So good work there. Um, Slight areas of improvement, obviously, like any other plan, there can be um, areas of improvement. Um, many objectives in this plan are about developing a strategy. For example, develop a strategy that identifies resources needed to attract new business and industry to, Great Shepparton, to Greater Shepparton. Um, I think it would be, as uh, going forward or in the next plans, perhaps the aim should be to have uh, um, the, the plan should have the implementation of recommendations from the strategy and to have it have the smart goals kind of thing to make it more uh, measurable and specific. So yeah, it's a very good uh, comprehensive plan and I think um, everybody who wants to know what the con council is doing, what the hell they are doing, it's all in there. So that's a good one. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Councillor Jim Eddy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think Councillor Abdullah has uh, summed it up reasonably well. But one of the things that has come out of our uh, planning processes for the 2017-2020 uh, council plan is that we will be looking at a revised reporting format that's clear and concise and easily read from members of our community who wish to read it. And I think that's an important part of our uh, new plan coming forward. Thank you. Indeed. Any councillor wishing to speak against this motion? Any other councillor wishing to add comments for the motion? Yes, I'd just like to make a comment. Thank you. I commend Councillor Abdullah for her understanding of the plan so quickly. Um, probably understands it all better than I do, and I've been here four years since he's only been here a couple of months. Um, but one thing about the current plan, it isn't easy to tick off as we'd like to, and we're addressing that in our new plan. That'll be easy for people to understand, and it'll be easy to go, yes, we've done that, we've completed that, and we've ticked it off. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that. Good. Any other councillor wishing to add comment for the motion or against? None. Councillor Abdullah, any closing comments? No further comments, thank you. Great. All in favour? Against? Motion carried. Item 8.5, councillors. Fine. 8.5 on page 37. Uh, report on the Greater Shepparton City Council General Elections 2016. Before we, I ask for a, a move of a motion on page 38, councillors. There's a slight typographical error under uh, the second paragraph under economic impacts. It currently states there are no identified social implications associated with this report, but in fact it should read there are no identified economic implications associated with this report. So please note that. Do we have a councillor wishing to move the recommendation as a motion? Page 37, which clearly says that the council received a report from the Victorian Electoral Commission in relation to the Greater Shepparton City Council General Elections 2016. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. A seconder, please. Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, councillor Hazelman. 
I mean, this is a, a requirement under the Local Government Act that the, the VEC, who were, were appointed to provide election services to the Council for the 2016 election, have to provide a report. And you could work through that report and trot out statistic after statistics, but there's a couple that I would like to comment on. The number of ballot papers counted was 77.79, so almost 25% uh, of eligible people didn't vote mm. or were invalid in their vote. Um, comparing to the state average of 75.67, so we did slightly better than the rest of the state. Um, at the previous election, though, we did record a turnout of 80%, so our, our numbers dropped. And the informal vote, which was uh, predicted would happen, given the circumstances, was 11.99%. That was compared with 6% for all post-elections across the state. And at the previous election in 2012, it was 9.53%. So in terms of voter participation, significantly deteriorated position from the previous election. Thank you, Councillor Hazel. And Councillor O'Keefe, do you wish to comment? No, any councillor wishing to speak against this motion? For the motion? I think just if I can make one quick comment, I think the reason for the high informal vote was there were so many good selections available. No doubt, People no doubt. Choose. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Uh, Councillor Hazen, any closing comments? Couldn't follow that one. No, no. no. All in favour? Against? Motion carried. Now, item 8.6, councillors on 39, the recommendation that the council note the publicly advertised contracts awarded by the Chief Executive Officer under delegated authority and tenders that have been ad advertised but not yet awarded. Do I have a council wishing to move that recommendation as the motion? Before I do, just let me just make another correction. On the page 39, first paragraph that says tendered uh, contracts awarded under delegated authority by the CEO. Uh, in the one two fifth column, it uh, has Mawson Constructions listed as awarded to, in fact, it's NL drainage. So please make that correction, councillors. Any councillor wishing to move the motion? Councillor Giovannetti, seconder, please. Councillor Patterson, councillor Giovannetti. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you indicated earlier, this uh, recommendation is to um, um, authorise the um, contracts that have uh, been awarded under delegation um, and also uh, the request for tenders that have uh, gone out and, and as yet have not been received. Uh, standard process uh, under our delegations policy. Full stop. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Giovannetti. Councillor Patterson? I think Councillor Giovannetti covered it very well. Fantastic. Any councillor wishing to speak against this motion? None. Any other councillor wishing to speak for? Back to you, Councillor Giovanni. No, I don't think there's any need for further comment, Mr Mayor. Thank you. All in favour? Against? Motion carried. Yes, indeed. Page 42. Councillors, we have an item uh, in relation to the 2016-2017 quarter two forecast review. Yeah, it does. On page 42, 43, all the way to page 45. Do I have a councillor wishing to move that rather lengthy recommendation as the motion? Councillor Patterson, seconder, Councillor O'Keefe. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Um, there's realistically in this recommendation, there's enough to run about two council meetings on. <laughs> right. It was split up probably how it should be, so it's more understanding. Um, the, the parts I really do like about it is the fact that we now have a, um, in our parks and open space, we have uh, the opportunity to ch charge market stall holders $100 instead of a considerable amount more for your your Lions clubs, your Rotary clubs that are actually generating funds for the community. 
I salute that and that is really good. There is lots and lots of charges and fees that have changed here. Um, you really have to read through to understand them. Some have been um, taken away and put back in different forms to make it clearer. Cosgrove, um, as we, we know, there's, um, there's been some issues there. There is a section here that will hopefully allow us to become more competitive. Um, you could nearly say there's rubbish wars going on at present and we need to be fully armed and ready to go. Uh, this gives us the freedom to attack, so to speak, when we need to and defend when we need to. So I'd encourage anyone that has an interest in our fees and charges to really have a good look right through it. Um, lots of different amendments, the planning app applications, etc. cetera, um, very complicated, uh, all understandably correct. And uh, yeah, I fully support it. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe. Yes, look, I agree with that. And also, obviously, the not-for-profit organisations are becoming much stronger in our region due to so much fundraising needed. So I think this is a great step in that direction to really make sure it's affordable for them to run these types of um, events. Good. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Any councillor wishing to speak uh, against the motion? No. Anyone wishing to add further comments for the motion? No. Back to you, Councillor Patterson. No, thank you. All been said. Being said. All in favour of the motion? Against. Motion carried. <laughs> Item 9.1 on page 52, councillors. Recommendation is that the council note the planning permit, the VCAT, development hearing panel and enforcement file information detailed in this report. Do I have a councillor wishing to move that recommendation as the motion? Councillor Patterson, your arm's getting a bit of a workout tonight. <laughs> Seconder, please. Councillor Hazelin. Councillor Patterson. Uh, yes, this is good news. Um, when you read through it, it's to do with uh, the VCAT claims and also the performance base of our planning department. Um, last year, September 1, we um, had, uh, what was it, 234 planning applications and this year we've had 261. Um, number of days to decide that last year was 232. This year uh, was 257. This year was 232. And average days to have the whole work done was um, 42 days this year compared to 47 last year. So there's a direct improvement. There's mention of a few um, VCAT hearings there, which both have supported and generally council's decision. Um, there'll always be some for and some against. It's out of our control, but um, you know, they do a good job. So I'd like to congratulate the planning department on their, their effort. They are really making a dip. They come into a lot of uh, lot of criticism, but people don't realise that when they put an application in, and they might think it takes four weeks to get back to us, or well, we send it out to the referral agencies, and we can't issue a permit till we receive the reply back from all those referral agencies. So, if one of those agencies are slow, well, we can't issue the plan permit, and we get the blame. So, you know, the guys have done a good job. Congratulate them. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hazelman. Only to repeat that uh, it is a very, very good news story. We've um, sort of exceeded our performance from the previous year, which in itself was very good. Um, the clear evidence is that the, the council's planning function has been supported um, almost without exception at VCAT, and that very positive outcome for our, our planning department. And also indicating in there, through it's been maligned at some point. Uh, points the issues of how the DHP works, and that's um, you know, work over the over the coming months. So I think it demonstrates that through our planning department, we are providing a uh, a quality of service that is probably better than most around the state. Hazelman, any council wishing to speak against this motion? For back to you, Councillor Patterson again. No comments. All in favour, please. Against, motion carried. Item 9.2, councillors, on page 59. M Amendment C195, investigation area three, rezoning to the urban growth zone, consideration of submissions. So do I have a councillor wishing to move that motion? Yes, Mr Mayor, I'll move the recommendation printed on page 59 of the agenda. Councillor Hazelman, uh, a seconder, please. 
Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Hazlett. Yeah, Ms. Mayor, it wouldn't be my intention to debate the pros and cons of all uh, the elements of the amendment. That's, that's not the purpose. Um, this is simply um, a process, one of many that will occur. We've had an investigation area with a recommendation adopted by Council to move towards a planning scheme amendment. That amendment is, is now underway. It's a public process. All um, affected residents have the opportunity to put some forward. Um, this is very simple initial process about rezoning to the urban growth zones and the consideration of submissions. It's not about public acquisition overlay, it's not about other, other aspects or development plans or contribution plans from developers or anything like that. It is simply designating that area as an urban growth zone and people um, exercising their rights and being able to place submissions and the formal process for those submissions is to an independent planning panel who will then um, assess those and make a report back to Council. That's probably at the point when Council needs to solve the debate on the merits, pros and cons or whatever. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor O'Keefe. Any Councillor wishing to speak against for the motion? Back to you, Councillor Hazelman. Uh, um, all been said. All in favour? Against? Motion carried. Page 72 of your agendas, Councillors. Item 9.3, Landscape Plan Guide. The, the, mo the recommendation is regarding endorsing and releasing for public comment. So, Councillors. Councillor Abdullah, would you like to move that motion? Yeah, I would like to move the recommendation on page number 72 regarding the landscape plan, landscape plan guide for landscapes in the agriculture park plan. Thank you. And, Do I have a second, please? Second, Councillor Giovannetti. Councillor Abdullah, would you like to speak to this motion? Yep. Um, it's a good start. It's, um, it's the landscape plan guide is going to assist the, those applying for planning permit. Um, and it's um, three councils have contributed to this guide. Uh, this is not for domestic purpose, it's for commercial space only. Uh, it's good to have a standardized approach across um, these councils and it was a collaborative effort to develop the document. Uh, Shepardin uh, being the procurement leader, as I understand. And uh, guidelines have produced a template for uh, commercial use and enforcement of the landscape uh, plan to make it mandatory to go to the landscape plan planners is, is part of that guide. And um, a guide pre preparation was done in consultation with the uh, experts, uh, subject matter experts, horticulture experts and others. So yes, so it's, um, it's a very good um, uh, um, step to have this kind of guide available uh, to, of course, to um, mitigate the risk of having any confusions and uh, lack of standardization across the municipality in terms of landscape. Thank you, That's Councillor. All, thanks. Councillor Giovannetti. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, we received a very detailed uh, landscape plan uh, guide from, uh, from staff and it just goes to show the, the, um, the various options that people have um, when they are uh, planning developments. Myself as the keen gardener uh, that I am, um, <laughs> probably <laughs> didn't need to get much past page one because gardening and landscaping for me, if it doesn't involve a mower, with a snipper or roundup, it's probably not in my vocabulary. But I think the guy was actually uh, extremely well done and congratulations to the staff. Councillor Giovannetti, any other councillor wishing to speak against this motion? For the motion? Just one quick comment. Um, the three councillors have done a great job here, the consultant. They've really taken note of disease-bearing trees, which is very important in our neighbourhood. Indeed it is. Um, so that was a really good, good move. Good, thank you, Councillor Patterson. Any other councillor wish to speak against or for the motion? Good, Councillor Abdullah, any closing comments? No further comments, thanks. That being the case, all in favour of the motion? Against? Motion carried. In almost similar vein, item 9.4 on page 76, councillors. It's our climate adaptation plan. Do I have a councillor wishing to move a motion in relation to the recommendation on page 76?
Laszlo O'Keefe. Seconded, please. Councillor Sutton, was that right? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Sutton. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak? It's all pretty straightforward, um, just obviously having a climate plan that pretty much works with our environment. Um, yeah, pretty much it's pretty straightforward. Good, thank you. Councillor Sutton, would you like to add further comment? I'll just say there's been risk workshop workshops undertaken and they've clarified what they need to do, so um, they've done a very good job with this. Good, thank you. Any councillor wishing to speak against this motion? But for the motion? Okay, Councillor O'Keefe, any closing comments? Nothing to add? That being the case, all in favour of the motion? Against? Motion carried. Item 9.5, Shepherd and Railway Precinct Master Plan, endorse and release for public comment. Councillors, on page 82, we have a recommendation. Do we have a councillor wishing to move that as a motion? Councillor Hazelman. First to me. Thank you. A seconder, please. Councillor Patterson, Councillor Hazelin. Just a very brief comment, a one sentence comment. You did say it was a draft master plan. It forms part of the Shepparton CBD revitalisation project as a priority project. Um, there's a range of uh, partners and funding sources that have been identified there who have contributed towards this. But the most critical part of the motion is that it, the draft plan is being released for public comment. And response to that and with those comments no doubt we'll be able to then produce a, a final plan. Thank you. Councillor Patterson. Uh, just a quick comment. Our forefathers made two mistakes when they started to work on Shepparton. They turned their back on the river and they turned their back on the railway station. Um, we can't really reverse the river as much as we can the railway station but over time both of those will be corrected I believe so I'd encourage people to have a read of this strategy uh, and have an input. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Any councillor wishing to speak against this motion? Councillors wishing to speak for? Back to you, Councillor Hazelin, for a final comment. None. All in favour? Against? Motion carried. Councillors, that was uh, the end of our normal items. So we're up to item 10. Am I correct, Peter? Yeah. On page 91, table of motions. There is none. Reports from council delegates to other bodies. There is none. Reports from special committees and advisory committees. Nil. Notice of motions and amended or rescission motions. None as well. Documents for signing and sealing. Nil. <coughs> item 15.1 on page 90. Three, we have a recommendation in regard to the councillor's community interaction and briefing program. Uh, have a councillor wishing to move that motion. Councillor Giovannetti. Seconder, please. Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Giovannetti. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, uh, the recommendation itself is, uh, is quite straightforward. But it is, it is interesting to note as a new councillor um, the number of meetings that councillors are required to attend um, are more considerable than what I uh, had ever first envisaged and um, it just goes to show that um, people see the role of a councillor as uh, often as being one of um, someone making a decision but that's not that's probably only half or probably only a quarter of the job really um, being involved in the various committees um, and groups that are within the uh, Greater Shepherd and City Council uh, is a uh, quite an onerous task. And um, we're just looking at the number of meetings here, and I didn't add them up, but there'd probably be something like about 70 to 80 meetings that uh, we've attended over the past month. So it's interesting, uh, as I say, for a new uh, councillor to um, just see the, the breadth of the work that is involved in the role. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor O'Keefe. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Yeah, absolutely support uh, Councillor Giovanetti there. 
Um, I think this is a little bit of an indicator to the public. I mean, it's nowhere near, obviously, within the, the four years, let alone 12 months of what councillors are involved in. I will say, um, as a new councillor, it's part of um, the experience, the positive experience of being on council is having that opportunity to get out amongst the community and, from my point of view, also learning such a different perspective of our community. So it's a wonderful thing to be part of this. Thank you, councillor. Any councillor wishing to speak against this? None. Any councillor wishing to add further comments for the motion? None. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to make uh, All in favour? Against? Motion carried. <laughs> Item 16.1 is the Assemblies of Councillors. Sorry, councillors, just so you know, Item 16.1 wasn't listed in the index at the front of the agenda, but it is in the body. Councillors, will I find the page where the recommendation is printed? 90, sorry, 104? Yes. Council will note the record of, the, uh, of assemblies of councillors. So, do I have a councillor wishing to move that? Councillor Giovanetti? A seconder, please. Councillor Sutton? Councillor Giovanetti? Uh, Mr. Mayor, it's all pretty self explanatory, to be perfectly honest. It is indeed. Councillor Sutton? Any councillor wishing to speak against? For? No closing comments, Councillor Giovanetti? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All in favour? Madison, you in favour or against? In favour? Uh, yes, I was Thank just you. considering whether I was or not. Right. <laughs> against? Um, motion carried. Item 17, urgent and other business. Thank you. <laughs> Public question time. Uh, Mr. Harriet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have two questions today from Mr. John Gray, and John's in the audience. Uh, welcome, John. John's first question, as I recall, when the Victorian Government Authority, succeeding the previous Vic Urban, has completed the planned development and the sale of council-owned Parkside Gardens for residential allotments, a sum of $1 million will be paid to council. What is the current state of play in this protracted project, and what steps, including local promotion, is Council taking to expedite the timely conclusion of this agreement? <coughs> the response, in 2002, Council entered into an agreement with uh, Urban Regional Land Corporation, now Places Victoria, for the development of the land at Parkside. As part of the agreement, Places Victoria undertook all the costs of the development, advertising and sales, with Council to receive 10.95% of the net sale proceeds. At the time the agreement was entered into, it was anticipated that Council would receive in excess of $1 million. However, the development deed stated that Council would receive a guaranteed minimum of $662,000. <coughs> the sale of land had been slow, with uh, one or two properties being sold each year. In uh, May 2014, Places Victoria had the blocks revalued by the Valuer General's Office, and Council agreed to reduce the price of the blocks in line with that valuation. Since then, sales have been steadily increasing and to date this uh, financial year, Places Vic have sold nine properties. As each property is sold, Council receives payment of the 10.95%, so there is no lump sum payment at the end of the project. Council will continue to work with Places Victoria until the completion of this project. Question two. <coughs> More than two years ago, a clumsy these are John's words, uh, clumsy and ultimately unsuccessful attempt uh, was made to close a highly trafficked carriageway in Shepparton. The process cost Council tens of thousands of dollars in consultants and legal expenses, whereas if the municipality had had a cost-neutral road closure policy, such as in the municipalities like Melbourne, Geelong and Wodonga, the process would have saved that unnecessary expenditure. Has any progress, uh, not discounting sensible plagiarism, been made to rectify <laughs> this situation? Uh, the response, uh, yeah, thanks, John, for that question. Um, circumstances, the circumstances surrounding the proposed closure of Andrew Fairley Avenue were driven by an urgent request from the, uh, or both the state government and SPC, 
to secure over $100 million in investment in jobs and growth for one of Shepparton's largest employers. The urgency of the request required Council to act quickly to instigate the statutory requirements to signal its intent to close the road, which in turn triggered the requirement for public consultation. A road closure policy such as the ones referred to in your question would have delivered very little value due to the urgency of the matter being considered. As previously advised, John, our Council does not currently have a road closure policy, but may develop one in the medium term as part of other asset rationalisation strategies. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr Harriot. Confidential um, management report. Nothing, item 19.1, designation of confidentiality of information reports attached. We have a recommendation on page 105. Happy to move that, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Hazelman. Take order, Mr Mayor. Board, Councillor Giovanetti. Uh, that's a confidential, Mr Mayor. I can't speak. Speak, but anyway, that's fine. That's good. Uh, any other council wishing to speak against this motion? None. For the motion. Drag out the meeting for another minute. Yeah. Get away, Councillor Hazelman. That being the case, all in favour? Against? Motion carried. Thank you, Councillor. That, that brings us to the end of the meeting. So thank you for your attendance. I declare the meeting closed at 6.35. Thank you. Thank you.